Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. The outcome of Martha Kome William Ruto meeting is a mysterious one sided story packaged to the public to conceal the truth. Earlier this month, President Ruto accused judicial officers of teaming up with some Katans to stall government legacy projects. These accusations, however, are not new. And if you dig through the archives, you will find this video clip of William Ruto at some point, I remember during the Aror and Kimwarer Dam scandal, came out to accuse, make accusations and really defending corruption. Well, at that time, Maraga stood his ground. Vile tunavyoendelea mbele. Mipango ya serikali kama ile soko tumejenga hapa. Ile tunazungumzia ya barabara. Ile tunafanya mipango yote ya serikali. Kuna watu wengine wanafikiri ya kwamba wanaweza kuendelea na mambo ya ufisadi. Sisi tunataka kusema serikali ya jubili has no place. This government has no place for corrupt officials. And we want to send a very powerful notice that we must get value for the money that we spend, public money. We must get value. Kama wewe ni mtu ambaye umeajiriwa na serikali, unalipwa mushahara na serikali, alafu ile kazi umeajiriwa ufanye, unakuja unafanya inakuwa ni biashara yako. Iyo usahau. Kwa sababu haiwezekani wananchi wanalipishwa ushuru, ushuru ile inafika hapa, yule mtu ambaye ameajiriwa kuhakikisha kwamba barabara inajengwa ama soko ama stima, anakuja anakuwa mwizi ndani yake. Anafanya hiyo inakuwa biashara yake. Ile kazi ingefanywa na shilingi moja, inafanywa na shilingi tatu. Hiyo biashara itakoma. Under this administration there are no sacred cows. There are no big individuals, there are no brothers and sisters, we are only one nation. Na kama wewe unafikiria kwamba hiyo kazi itaendelea ujichunguze vizuri. And that was to show you that these accusations were not new. However, Martha Kome held a meeting with the president. The details of that meeting is what most of us, I think, Quite a number of us have looked at just the act of having the meeting. But in this podcast, I want us to look at the details of that meeting. And then what proceeded, what the next step after that. That meeting is likened by like the chief justice auctioneering the justice system to the highest bidder. A meeting that was supposed to resolve Ruto aggression towards some judicial officers turned into some sort of a butter trade. And I remember when Tuju once likened his meeting that at, at a time when he met Chebukati and the team and was saying he was wondering whether he met IBC officials or just uh, auctioneers that were willing to auction the country to the highest beta, beta. When Martha Kome walked to State House, went there with a begging bowl, and you wonder whether, or rather the outcome of that meeting is that more incriminating uh, the judiciary than even the, um, uh, than, than, than actually the real agenda that was there. And I want us to look at this because after that meeting, the Chief Justice met with the judges, an association of the judge, welfare association of the judges, to brief them of what he had, she had actually came with from the State House. And then what is being packaged, what the public is being told is a one-sided story, and I want you to get it. From that meeting, the Chief Justice and the political are running a story that judiciary presented 
there you know that meeting was 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 allegedly made to look at how corruption can be fought across the government agencies and that's why the others were brought and judiciary came out with some additional funding financial support to support this area number one part of the funds going towards a recruitment of 36 judges where 25 will go to high court and 11 more court of appeal judges so 36 more judges to be employed number two offering judges car grants and then number three is a budgetary allocation to modernize the court registries through automation and to expand alternative dispute resolution methods now part of what i am seeing here is what William Ruto accused the judges. Remember, he accused of judge, the judges of receiving some bribery to, you know, to give orders that were stolen government projects. What is also coming out there is looking like a bribery. And, you know, something very interesting is during the launch of UDA Manifesto, William Ruto was asked about this issue of um, this issue of uh, corruption and what he blamed you know he blamed Uhuru Kenyatta of weaponizing this through probably bribing the judges isn't this not just another form of bribery I want you to listen to this video this was during UDA manifesto my question is what is your Kenya Kwanzaa plan on fighting corruption? Secondly, myself and many other youths are on CLB listing. What is your plan? As Kenya Kwanzaa, our strategy on fighting corruption is in depoliticizing and removing the weaponization of our criminal justice system and instead building those institutions, the capacity of those institutions, whether it is the DCI, whether it's the ESCC, whether it's the entire police force, we want them to have an independent budget. We want them to control their budget the way they know how. We want them to investigate every incident without hindrance and without looking back, without anybody telling them that if they go this way, they will not get funding. That is why we are removing, <clears throat> that's why we are removing this office of the president accounting officer in charge of the police. We want the police to do their thing on their own. That is why we are saying the judiciary should have financial independence so that the judiciary can rule any way they want on any case without bothering whether they will get funding or not. That is our strategy on, uh, on fighting corruption. And number two, you have had statements, political statements, or oh, we are going to have the COVID billionaires arrested in 20 days. We are going to jail corrupt people. Those are political statements. Anybody serious, who is serious, about fighting corruption should be building the institutions that fight corruption. As Kenya Kwanzaa, as Kenya Kwanzaa, we want to build these institutions to the level where if the president is corrupt, the system will have him arrested and jailed. As simple as that. That's what happens. That's how the president of Korea was arrested and jailed. It's because the system worked. It is not the president wanted. It is not because the president decided. If it was the decision of the president, would you think she would have been arrested? So a system where the president still can decide who is arrested and who is not arrested is not a system that works. It is as simple as that. Now, what is the difference from what has been given because remember operationalization of the judiciary fund is in the constitution 
This is not William Ruto's money being given to the judiciary. It is taxpayers' money. And I think there is a legislative framework on what the judiciary is supposed to get. We are told that they are supposed to have financial autonomy. And that is something that President Ruto spoke you know, passionately about at the campaign trail. But what we are now seeing is just the same because judiciary, Martha Komi walked to State House and came out with some money. Isn't this a form of bribery? And what the judges are asking, full disclosure of the documents, of what was agreed. Full disclosure, because we are only told of what judiciary has gotten. And it's good Chief Justice has come out to give us what they have been given. Now, this meeting was a meeting between judiciary, legislature, executive, and COG. And that's why Anwar Guru was there. The question that the legal fraternity is asking is, give us full disclosure. Yes, it is good you've got an additional funding on um, to support the judges, to, to, to recruit more judges and to modernize the courts and to give car grants. Do you want to say that these are just goodies? What did you guarantee the executive? And that is the secret being hidden. No one is telling us what how, how this, all this that have been given is resolving the question William Root was asking, was saying in the public events, in the public rallies, that the judges are being bribed to stall government projects. Have we now, what did, what did you guarantee the executive? Because the executive is quite about it. And Nelson Harvey today, while speaking in Spice FM, Give an interesting twist to this while opposing the meeting but attempting to shield the president. But then he seems to be voicing, adding the voice on the need for the three parties to give us full disclosure. The background of this meeting is quite important. Mm -hmm. Who called for the meeting? It is the Chief Justice who called for the meeting. A fundamental mistake. Do we apportion blame on the part of the president no the president is an elected leader it is his responsibility to be in charge of the nation he's the head of state and is the head of government but as the head of the judiciary it is imperative upon the chief justice to realize what are the parameters upon which she may engage with the other heads of uh, the arms of government but for men fundamentally the, the outcome of this meeting speaks a lot. What the Chief Justice was asked to address was the wanton corruption in the judiciary. What did she go home with? She went home with uh, her begging bowl full. 25 judges of the High Court, 11 judges of uh, the Court of Appeal, and car loans. To what extent are these three issues going to help us fight corruption? Appropriately so, you said, the executive came out of uh, this meeting with nothing. But that does not mean that we end there. It is incumbent upon the people of Kenya to ensure that there is accountability and independence of the judiciary. There can never be independence without accountability. So first and foremost, the Chief Justice must address the issue of corruption. Not because it was raised by the President but because it is a big problem that has hindered the administration of justice in this country. Yes, according to Harvey, it was wrong for the president to meet um, the chief justice. And in fact, according to him, it is right. The only thing that is wrong is that the chief justice is the one that called for it. And you can see the hypocrisy in it. Was it in order for the president just to call out the judges in rallies and profile judge A, judge B, and all that? And when the president was doing that, they could not call the president on order. They could not say that is wrong. See, now you see the hypocrisy in politics. But on this one, they're getting it wrong on Chief Justice calling on that meeting. Now, you could see, and if you listen to that interview, he's also joining the voice and he's also asking the president, give us the details. What really was promised?
Because it seems the president went there, uh, the president of the Supreme Court went there with a begging bowl. And now after coming out, came out with what, according to what is telling the public, is the solutions that the court said. Now, what did Martha Kome offer the judiciary? Remember, the executive, remember, the political went back to the people the next day. And there is this video by Kimani Chungwa explaining the goodies that judiciary got, that what they gave the judiciary, without full disclosure of what they got back. It sounds some give and take, but the political is only talking and even the judiciary and the political is only packaging public what has been given to the judiciary. Wale unasikia mweshimua rais wakipinga sisi tukiongea mambo ya ufisadi. Nataka ni kuambie usiwasikize. Wale ni watu ambao wamekua kinufaika na ufisadi. Hata hao osoro anasema. Wale ulisikia jana wakipinga huo mkutano. Ni wale ambao wamekua kinufaika na ufisadi na mambo ya kuteka nyara uchumi na nchi yetu kupitia ufisadi. Therefore, Your Excellency, let me just encourage you and congratulate you, Her Ladyship, the Chief Justice, and our speakers in Parliament for the meeting that you had yesterday. And Your Excellency, since we are now all agreed as Kenyans that corruption, state capture, are a danger not just to us as a nation today, but even to future generations, that corruption remains the single most threat to our nation's welfare, Your Excellency. We want to thank you for convening the meeting that the judiciary requested. And you are all agreed. Those in the judiciary now agree that corruption is a problem. Those of us in the legislature agree that we have a problem of corruption in Kenya. Those of you, Your Excellency, serving under your leadership in the executive, you have also considered that indeed corruption is a cancer that we must deal with. I want to give you the highest assurance, Your Excellency, as your majority leader in the National Assembly, that whatever policy, administrative or legislative interventions that you require from Parliament, we shall be at the forefront of ensuring that those administrative policy or legislative reforms are enacted to help us deal with the uh, cancer and scourge of corruption and state capture in this country. You see that? And you know, the reason why I know there is an emphasis on what we have given to the judges is because there is issue of independence of the judiciary in the way the executive had really went to the rallies to verify this, judges. Now, what did Martha Kome offer in exchange is what the legal fraternity is asking. Give us full disclosure of the document. How was William Ruto's bribery claim on the judges finally uh, addressed? Or was it on table? And it seems that Martha Kome played direct into William Ruto's trap to bring her on the table. I don't know what you think. What are you seeing? And in this, I want to look at just a sneak, uh, um, um, a preview of, a review of why this has been kept as a top secret. Remember, Allegedly, there were meetings. They have created some, you know, some, some body to coordinate, to, to report on legal, administrative, and changes and policy uh, framework that should be developed by all those players in the sector to ensure they find a way of fighting corruption. Now, what started as judges are being bribed against my projects have now really been packaged back to public as reinforcing judiciary and hiring judges while that was not it. William Ruto wanted a sit-down 
with the judiciary. And there is one thing, there is a big probability that maybe the meeting might have resolved this. And that meeting, I still repeat, it was a peer stand. The real meeting between what Ruto wanted from the judiciary was a phone call, some night phone call, or some personal phone call between him and Mata Komi, asking him about that case, this case, and the other case. And you remember, mm, there are so many other cases. You know, people think, and I want to tell you this, huh? um, the reason why this is a highly kept secret is executive is been hiding in all this judiciary hula balu, but in real sense pursuing some vested interest. And I want to explain this. Affordable housing is facing uh, is facing legal battle twofold or twofold. The first one is the operationalization or rather the legislation on the taxation, or rather the, the housing levy. The other one is the land question that keeps on popping up. The land question on how people are being evicted, the court orders, people getting court orders to stop, to, to stop the eviction, because when government sees prime land, there is this monopoly of this land belongs to government land. And people have argued that, you know, um, there is this time when something is earmarked and now government says that is government land the whole question ends there and no one can question it anymore and then the next thing you're waiting for the bulldozers so I tend to think that it cannot be explained because the whole the housing levy and the, the health one I think they've even gotten breakthroughs there's some deep vested interest and from what I'm seeing they are, could be touching on land High-profile evictions in the offing. That's what you'll expect. High-profile evictions on the offing. Because they have actually realized that people have been rushing to court to get court orders and government conduct evictions against those court orders. Number two, the whole judiciary movie, the whole judiciary outcry was a movie. Just a political script without evidence. Because... One thing I was expecting is Mata Kome, the first question when he gets to that uh, meeting and is given a chance to say is to ask the president. Mr. President, you are claiming that Judge A, Judge B, and Judge C has been, have been receiving bribes from political quarters or rather from litigants, from well-funded litigants, to give cases, or rather to give verdict on cases touching government legacy projects. One thing I was expecting was, is why, because much as you also want to protect the judiciary, these allegations you're making in rallies are affecting the public trust on the judiciary. Why haven't you lodged official complaints through the JSC? I was expecting that. That is something that has not been seen because if that would be the outcome, it would have been noted there that moving forward, the executive will restrain from attacking the judiciary but will then resort on formal laid structure to launch complaints. That's, what, that's one thing that if we were genuine about the outcome of that meeting, we would also be seeing that. But remember on what will be seen now. What happens? Even um, Rekhedi Geshakwa had threatened to sue a judge. We, 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 would, we would have seen that because that is the cure. Remember, nothing stops a judge from giving any other case.